and lose his soul. Amen. amen. And, and then once you get saved, amen, it's a warfare, it's a fight, it's a battle trying to keep your soul salvation. Amen. amen. That's why I read the scripture earlier in Philippians chapter 2 where it talks about working out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. We're living in a time now, my brothers and sisters, that y'all know you be on your job and different things like that. You hear how people talk and all that. That we're living in a time now that people feel like that there is no God and that God is irrelevant and that the church is irrelevant. That's the reason why a lot of our pews are here today. I preach this message on last week about telling your story, but people don't even believe in God anymore. Y'all hear me? You can go up on the internet and pick out any kind of God that you want. And not only that, you can just look around your house and you'll see a God that we worship our children, we worship our husbands, our wives. We got a, a, something about us that calls us want to worship folks. It ain't nothing wrong with loving folks and having pride in your family and loved ones and things like that. But the problem is when we get to a place, we put them on a pedestal. We put them before God. And I am a strong believer that there's protocol and there's order. Amen. Nothing, I mean nothing, should be come before your relationship with Jesus Christ. I, I, I mean there's God and, and then there's your family, that which is your next ministry, your first ministry, your marriage, your family, whatever, and then the church. Uh, a many times we put the church in front of everything else. Now when I put that out there like that, don't mean that you just die and go to hell on a family plan. Now, in other words, everybody would stay at home, everybody stay at home, and, and if they, uh, we find a whole lot of wives and a whole lot of men. Uh, if one start running a leader church, then they'll lead the church, trying to keep up with them and all that kind of stuff. No, that, 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 that is the wrong thing to do. Ain't nothing like your soul salvation. Amen. Yeah. And we just like a, a, a telephone, cell phone family plan. You got both going to hell right now on a family plan. Yeah. There are wives and husbands sitting at home right now that, that deep down in their heart is a daughter. They want to be at church and they are calling your now. should be doing that. Deep down in their heart they want to come to church and they love God but because they got so much uh, insecurity in their life. Y'all don't hear me. They got to stay at home trying to watch somebody. My daddy told me a long time ago, if you in love with somebody and married to somebody, if they want to do something, they'll find a way to do it. Even if it ain't nothing but a five minute quickie. That's all right. That's all right. Let me help somebody. <laughs> and one thing about God, whatever done in the dark, is going to soon or later come to the light. You And, and, and teachings and doctrines and I, I told you heard about all kind of gods and all this so-called false prophets and all kind of things in First Timothy chapter 4 he talks about those deceiving spirits and people conscious seared with a hot hand uh, it, it's just sad that, that, that in this hour people don't even have a conscience anymore I, I mean when we was coming up I, I, I mean we went all that into Jesus and all that in the church uh, we go to church when there was a girl or uh, go to church when they had a homecoming you know when everybody brought the fried chicken and potato salad and the macaroni and all that but one thing about it when you went to church or not your family, your mother and father they taught you more Moral values and things like that. Do unto others as you would have others to do unto you. The problem is, too many of our people now, they're looking at that old sapper, old Fred sapper movie, doing unto them before they do it unto you. Y'all don't hear me. There's no such thing as golden rule no more. Neighbors don't even know one another. It used to be a time we know everybody in the neighborhood, but now you your nose shot off or cut off, sticking your nose in somebody else's business. They don't want you to know 
should have known who they is living next door. They might be a mafia sale or a terrier sale living next door. You don't know who your neighbor is no more. That's all right, y'all. Praise God. Our doctrine is a teaching that what is being taught in Sunday Timothy 4 and 3. He said, A time will come, and when the time is right here, right now. But look at something they said, The time here is right here, right now. But the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desire, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and therefore, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. See, see, you got to understand something. There's a church on every corner. I, I, I mean, you got the good news church, and you got the singing church where they go and sing and everything. You, you got the so-called hip hop church. You got the church where you can go in there with your jeans on and everything, and, and folk go up there and entertain you and all that kind of stuff. Then you got a church for the tall, skinny black folk. You got a church for the light skinny black folk. You, you got all kind of. You got the word church. Then you got the testimony church. You got the quartet church. That all they do have services. Bring quartets in. You got the so-called anniversary church. We got the Ursa Board anniversary. The missionary anniversary. We got the choir anniversary. Everybody got an anniversary. We got the little kids anniversary. We got the dance team anniversary. We got all this stuff going on in the church. There ain't nobody preaching the word. And then we got the church. It's just like the show time at the Apollo. They got the talent shows going on. They got the baby Gracious and 
and a merciful God into you. But it's also in the New Testament that the way that the sin and death and the gift of God is eternal life. We get to choose what we want. Oh, that's alright. That's alright. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Salvation. Wait, what is salvation? See, everybody's saying it, don't even know what salvation is. Salvation is a doctrine, it's a teaching. Salvation, the source of salvation is through Jesus Christ. I, I, I ain't saying nobody, I, I tell you, somebody might have been drowning or something, you jumped out there in the swimming pool or the lake and you saved or something like that. But I'm talking about saving somebody's soul that literally saved your soul, that spiritual part of you, the immaterial, invisible part of you, that when you leave this world, you go go somewhere. You ain't going to just go to the grave. You got all kind of teaching out there like that, that when you die, that's it, and it's over with. You're in the grave now, but the devil is alive. When you leave here, you can, let me give you your promise out. The next time, my brothers and sisters, that you have a dream, y'all will hear that. That dream is a thing that lets you know, though your body may be asleep, your spirit on the inside of you is still dreaming. So that is know when I leave this world that my soul and my spirit my God is going somewhere only thing going in the grave is my body that's alright oh, that's alright cause your soul and your spirit don't never sleep oh my God and another thing about it little daughter, is that when you sleep at night let the smoke come in the house y'all you got your senses you can see and you can smell and you can feel you can feel with something crawling up the side you come up to that. When you got a roach in the bed or a spider in the bed, that's all right. Huh? That's all right. Huh? <laughs> oh my God. You, I, I, I know this off the wall, but that's all right. You want to hang around in the hole in the wall. I, I will come off the wall. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> to be saved, in the order for one to be saved, one had to have been lost. See, see, I, 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 in order for me to be saved, I had to first realize. That I was lost. Most folks don't know they were lost. I, I didn't. I, I didn't know I was lost. Lost, what you mean lost? I know who I'm at. Come on. what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> lost because of my sin. Lost because of my relationship with Satan. I, I, I didn't know. I, I, I knew who my daddy was. But I didn't know that Satan was my uh, uh, daddy uh, before I got saved. Come on, talk to me now. I, I, I was doing everything he told me to do. I was ripping and running, drinking, smoking, doping everything. Y'all, y'all don't have it. This is my story. And somebody say, you might know not be telling everybody your story. But you ain't got to tell everybody everything that you do. And that's me my views are in the right now. They think you come out your mama woman. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And, and you've been saved all your life. But you need to tell them just how low down and track me you are by giving your testimony. How the Lord saved you and brought you up. Thank y'all don't hear me. I'm trying to hear so loud. My God, I used to have both your legs up in the air. Come on, talk to me. Instead of your hands in the air. Oh, no, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, my God. I, I, I can't get nobody. I, I need some real people to preach to. Y'all don't hear me. Because, see, you got to understand the only way you is very loud on the street. Them folks out there in the world, out there in the street, they doing just what folks need to do out there in the church. They know what they do. But when you begin to tell them about Jesus, you got to let them know that I ain't been like this all my life. So let me tell you my story. I ain't been like this all my life, brother. Let me tell you my story. I remember a time, oh my God. I, 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 I remember a time and that. Did you say you, you got that on lunch with you? Uh, you feel like that little boy that had two fish and five loaves of bread. Because they're going to take all day for me to tell you my story. All the mess that I was in. But a man came from glory. Y'all don't hear that. My God, y'all don't hear that. Died on the old rugged cross over 2,000 years ago. He shed the blood for me. In the midst of my mess. In the midst of my drunkenness. In the midst of my whore. So I would have to go there. He got up on the third day morning with all power in his hand. He shed his blood. I mean, no greater love than knowing that he laid out his life for his friend. His name was Jesus. Oh, my God. 
I'm like that. So I, I was lost, and I didn't know I was lost. You know, I, 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 I tell us all the time. I know people get tired of hearing this. Happen, but but I actually thought. I, I, I actually thought. That's just how blind I was. And then you know what to tell you. Well, you're 12 years old now. Uh, uh, you're going to have to go up there and join the church and, and get baptized so your sins are be on you instead of on your mama's head. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And, and so I got baptized. Been 12 years old, have a little white pants on. I remember having a little white t shirt and a little white sock. I remember a long time ago. I remember that. We were outside having one old booze in the ground on the outside of the church, outside a big old building. And we had baptism on the day you, 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 you didn't mind getting baptized because it was homecoming the same day. You changed a little clothes, went up at the church, they'd preach in your hand, and everybody celebrated and all that stuff. And then they had that good old macaroni and fried chicken and green beans and had flapjacks then. Now, now young people don't know what flapjacks is. That's when you had that dough and had that them apple pies over in there. They were called a flapjack. Now y'all know that's all right. Uh, and I thought I was safe. And all those years that I was ripping and running and doing whatever I thought I was big and bad enough to do, I actually thought that if I died then or got killed or something, that I would go to heaven. But lo and behold, somebody told me the truth. My God, y'all don't hear me. Say, why drink that old right gut look? You ought to drink champagne and go to hell in style. That's all right. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I, so conviction, the Holy Ghost convicted me. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 sinner man. Somebody called it your name. I was convicted. In the church saying, I, I know y'all, I, I got to tell my story. Because too many times preachers don't tell the story. I, I know you've been to seminary school. I know you got all your doctor degree. But, but you ain't been saved all your life. Come on, talk to me. Uh, that's all. You may not done all the things that I've done, but you still born and sin and shaped in the nickel. I don't care if you come out your mama's womb and you got on the Greek club choir, you still was a son and need to be saved. Shaped in the nickel. That's all right. Y'all talk to me. And, and then I lost. And, and then I, I had to repent. That was the thing about repentance. I, I, I y'all women today. Uh, see, 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 see. Uh, promoted or elevated or voted in somewhere to an office but your character your character will not allow you to stay there y all, y all, y all. Oh, Char character is everything huh? repentance is a voluntary and sincere change in the mind of a sinner causing him to turn from his sin in other words now you are a free martyr one thing about God he's a free martyr agent he, he, he ain't gonna twist your arm. Come on, get saved now. Get saved, Hansel. Uh, uh, he ain't gonna do that. But the Holy Ghost will convict you. Had me cry, big old grown man, crying like a baby. Didn't even know why I was crying. Because the Holy Ghost had convicted me of my sins. Y'all don't hear me. I, I mean, the Holy Ghost, the high share of heaven, he had a warrant for my rest. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all folks in here say, y'all know what I'm talking about. I had read all. Trying to get away from the shed. But the shed caught up with me. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Slipping and sliding, peeping out of high, shaking and a child. But the Holy Ghost, huh, he came with a rest woman. Johnny Hills, this day, your soul is required of you. But I got a lawyer for you. His name is Jesus. The day you've been to go before the judge, God the Father. But I Time, repent. Repent me the turn. No, 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 no. They got to be a godly soul. I'm not sorry because he got caught. See, that's the time in my life I got caught. 
Yeah, they didn't want to get caught. I just got caught. And, and you know how you put on that old doom and gloom loop. I'm sorry. And that ain't genuine. But, but, but repentance is a godly sorrow. It's something that takes place on the inside of you. I, I can't explain it. I, I can't put it in labor terms. But something caused me to turn from my marijuana ways. I said, Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Come into my heart. Make me whole. I repent. In other words, it had to be sincere. See, a whole lot of folks, it was sincere. They got a thing that they think they say, but it was a genuine repentance. The devil has blinded them because of repentance. A total turnaround don't mean that you're perfect. It don't mean you're going to tie all the eyes and cross all the teeth. But before I got saved, I practiced sin. I made it my business to be a liar and be a good liar. You know what? I was good at what I was. I put the P in player. This guy not going to know what a player is. I put the P in player. I'm talking about I carry the P. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Paul said I was the chief son. In other words, I mean when you see it, you see it good. <laughs> and enjoy sinning. Oh, that's to be real now. When you was out there doing your thing, get your three along blue right here. Oh, I didn't enjoy that. Yes, I did. I enjoyed. I enjoyed getting drunk. I enjoyed taking six kids to build your one kid. Come on, what a big, what a big guy. Yeah, I drunk it all up. <laughs> You think she and Charles or something? We were rolling dope out of newspaper. Big old cigarette butt like the marijuana joint like that. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing on us. I put the P in the roll. Oh, uh, I try to help somebody. See, we got to tell you You, you ain't, uh, ain't nothing new in the summer. Talk about this. Well, y'all, y'all don't know what we going through. Yeah, we know what you're going through. <laughs> you, you, you just got a little more access to Facebook and Internet. You just got a little more technology than what we got. Yeah, y'all, in the old days, I, I mean, you had to have a little feeling for somebody. Come on, talk to me. Well, you lay down and went to sleep with them. Come on, talk to me. Now it's a recreation. You got all these Jacobs in the house. I'm mean, y'all going to have any church now. You lay down and sleep with somebody, get them that Who is you? Don't even know what their name is. That's all right. I'm trying to help somebody. Repentance is a confession of sin. It means to forsake of sin. Let me move on. I got to go now. It means a turning from something to God. See, you, you got to, I practice, see, I'm no longer practice. Now, now, let's just keep it real now, in the labor term. Every now and then, you're going to make a mistake, think a wrong thought, and you might intentionally do something that you know you ain't got no business. But the thing is about you conscious of it, that is a sin, and that God ain't pleased with it. So sooner or later, eventually, you have to repent of that thing and ask God to forgive you. When I was a sinner, practice of sin, I, I, I didn't have my mind on God. I, I, I didn't have my mind on nothing but what I was running after. I, I, y'all don't have me. Playing the card game, I, 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 I had my mind on whatever my sin was. That, that was my main thought. Because, see, I'm under the impression, y'all. Listen to that. Let me back up with that. I'm under the impression that how big a, God, how big a dealer or smoker or user or who I was, I was still saying now because I had got baptized at the age of 12 and had my name on the church roll and Reverend Matter was going to preach my funeral. So all of that got me at the pearly day. Who got over about it? You, you, you just only knew I was about to bust hell wide open. Oh my God. Oh my God. You see, see, I applied all that time. Uh, thank you. That all that shit that I do, that because my name was on the church roll, that church roll, uh -huh, yeah, you can come around uh, every once a month, collect the dues. When I'm talking about no tax, they collect the dues. I get a ticket, and you, you spit out that track and had a little ball, you'll hide it. 
He got something he ain't worried about hiding. Come on, Dick, get the five dollars, man. Get on up out of here. So we do what we got to do. You get your little five dollars. You, you think you done done something, done done him a favor. Done done a church favor with your little five dollars sale. That's all right. That's all right. On my way to hell, didn't even know. I, I, I'm just being real. That, that's what my mind said. I, I, I don't know about nobody else's mind said. <laughs> Turn it to God, Acts 26 and 28. He said to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Repentance, it brings joy. Repentance, it brings pardon and forgiveness of your sin. The Holy Spirit has revealed unto you. Salvation and repentance comes by conviction and by faith. In Romans 10 and 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Faith is your confidence and your assurance. It's all about your belief system. Otherwise, you cannot be saved without faith. But he that comes to God must believe that he is. My faith is the substance of things hope of the evidence of things not seen. My brothers and sisters, all of them saying the door, watch about where they're That if you claim yourself as you need to know that you know that you know that you know. My God, don't nobody did lay down at night. My God, and thank you, you're saved and you ain't saved. And something happened, God forbid. You leave this world because you've got to understand. This ain't nothing just a dressing up place. Here I am now in my sisters. But my God, can you imagine how long eternity is? Eternity is eternity. It doesn't stop y'all. Don't hear me. My God. Lord have mercy. He said, he really, but without faith it is impossible to please God. But he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This word is not going for to beat anybody down. I'm just talking about the doctrine of salvation. Because we're living in a town now. The dog is saved. The cat is saved. Everybody is saved. There's some that even teaching that because of what Jesus done on Calvary Cross. There's a doctrine of teaching out here now. That everybody that's born, when you come from your mother's womb because of what Jesus done on Calvary's call over 2,000 years ago that you automatically say that there's a lie from the pits of hell. God didn't set it up like that. He set it up to where somewhere down the road you had a consciousness that know that his son Jesus God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son into the world. In that be the case, nobody would never have to acknowledge Jesus and that Jesus is God's plan for salvation. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh yeah, that's a teacher out here now. Tell me folks that. You had a whole lot of the church pulled away from the man of God. My God, who was preaching that, teaching that doctrine, keeping in at the time. Put him off their television station because of that doctrine and that teaching that he was teaching. Y'all don't hear me. David said, it's sin that my mother conceived me. I was born and shaped in iniquity. I didn't get Jesus went to the Calvary cross. But you got to understand something about God. That you are a free moral agent. You can choose life or you can choose death. It's your choice whether you believe or not. It's not my choice to convict, to condemn you or try to twist your arm. But I'm just preaching glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Ghost that convicts you. So then faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. Let me move on. Give to me a little bit more time. So therefore you got to work out your soul salvation. Y'all don't mind. Just look at somebody beside you and say you got to work it out. Uh, Slipping and slide, peeping in the hind, shucking and jack. At the end of the day, you gotta work it out. Y'all don't hear me. She even right here behind the poop, and you think I'm all this and all that I know, but I gotta work out my soul salvation just like everybody else. It just is easy for me right here to preach this glorious gospel. And all y'all get saved. My God, this is just a hypothetical now. Because I ain't going to hell for nobody. 
preach this glorious gospel to y'all and y'all get saved and then the preacher die and go to hell itself. Now it happens all the time. There's a whole lot of preachers in hell. A whole lot of prophets in hell. Apostles would be apostles in hell. A whole lot of missionaries and ushers in hell. A whole lot of praise leaders in hell, y'all. Deacon lessons in hell, y'all. Y'all, y'all don't hear me. That's all right. That's all right. Jesus said, my God, all that came before me is robbers and thieves. Y'all don't hear me. He said, in that day, they gonna come. Now, this is what he said. In that day, they gonna come. Lord, did not be preaching your name. Did not be prophesied in your name. Jesus said, the from me, you record of iniquity, but I know you not. Too many folks now are trying to build their own kingdom instead of building the kingdom of God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then he said, Now stop complaining. Stop your jealousy. Stop hating on folks. Cut out your doubts and your disbeliefs. A child of God, according to Philippians, should be harmless and blameless, yes. without fault. Yes. This is where he tells us we need to walk. I'm in mean, Philippians chapter 2, now I read earlier. He said, this is a crooked and perverted generation. A perverted generation. In other words, you got pedophiles in the church. Y'all be out on him. You got child molesters in the pool pit. Child molesters on the deacon boat. Deaconess, y'all are here. You got child molesters and perverted folks in the school system. Teachers messing with our little children in school. Yeah, y'all don't hear that. You got to do a background check on everybody that's doing children's church. Because you don't know whether or not they're a pedophile or whatever. Got a perverted generation. Oh, preacher, when you going to be quiet? You talking about all this stuff. My God, you got it now. You don't know whether it's a man or a woman. Trying to beat down. I'm not homophobic. They got a soul to say. But this is the hour that we're living in. You don't know what for what. But one thing I do know, men, me and y'all listening, the Bible said that in the last day, there'll be something like 15 women in every man. Women just wait to take on your name. And the reason why, because a lot of them in jail, a lot of them on drugs, and a lot of them went the other Been a little all day long. I'm talking about women that's exactly women. Got plenty of money driving the same thing. They don't care you're pushing a long old ride, a motorcycle, a four lift driver, whatever. Only thing they want to know is you straight. <laughs> you better move on, please. That's all right. I'm about to get in trouble. I feel a slap spirit coming on that. <laughs> I better close this thing. He said that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. See, see, this is the only way you can get saved now. Yeah, yeah, y'all don't have that. You, you ain't got to go on this. Uh, uh, all you can do is say, Lord, I'm a son. I, I, I'm a son and I want to be saved. That, that's all you can do. Just keep it real. And he said, if any man knock on that door, he said, oh, behold, I knock on the door. If you just open up the door, he said, I am the Father. We will come in and sup with you. Other words, we'll come in and sit down where you at. Sit down in your automobile. Sit down while you're in the bathroom in the shower. Come or come in, sit down at your kitchen table on your job. No, but you ain't got to be in the church to get saved. Just call on the name of the Lord. And I said, call on the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. You can be on the side of the street. And you can just call on Jesus. And you repent. And confess that I'm a sinner. And I need to be saved. And I shall be saved. Oh, it's just that plain and simple. We make things so complicated. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes. See, see, salvation. It's just like anything else. If there's some fire get on you, you gonna say fire, and you'll try to put it out. Salvation is just that so. 
But there's another thing about sin. I remember this preacher some years ago preached a sermon about the dogs. And sin is just like this. <laughs> there was a man in the backyard cooking some steaks on the grill. And the dog ran up and grabbed one of them hot steaks off the grill. And that steak, he was hot and running out across the field. That steak was burning his mouth, but he never would let go of the steak. <laughs> Seeing it the same way. It'll burn you, but sooner or later you gotta shake it off and let it go. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll cost you more than you want to pay. And it'll keep you down longer than you want to stay. So that one night booty call sometime, it might be your last call. It might be the very thing. See, one thing about sin. See, when you know you're doing something, you ain't got no business. The devil make it look like it's the best you ever had. Oh, my God. <laughs> because you slipping in a slide. It ain't no different than anything else. You make it look that way to keep you going back and back and back. It's just like lay potato chip. Nobody can eat just one. Oh my God. Uh, I better close out here. I, I, I got a macaroni spirit on me right now. <laughs> Y'all, that's a fried chicken. That's a boat chop. Y'all, man. Pastor, y'all not be talking like that. Let me run this back. I want to deal with this thing about sanctification. Because see, some people might be saved. But, but dealing with the thing concerning sanctification. And that's one of the terms of salvation. And I'm going to close out and let you go. Because I want you to be able to come back on next Sunday. And I, I, I don't blame you sometimes. I would go to freedom myself. But that old preacher there, he preached too long. Y'all go to heaven. Sanctification, sanctified. In other words, when you got born again, there was a level of sanctification that took place in your life. Sanctification means you were set aside. You was, had a separation under God. In other words, there are a whole lot of people that were saved, but they have not been separated. Y'all don't hear that. In other words, you got to separate yourself. When the thing that happened with me when I got saved, I knew I couldn't run with the same crowd that I used to run with. They said, well, you think you're acting funny right now. No, I wasn't acting funny. I just know I had to separate myself if I wanted to continue to be saved. I knew what the home bars were doing. They were still drinking and smoking and gambling. I knew that if I valued my soul salvation, it's all right to still call them my friends, my buddies. Y'all don't hear that. Because one of these days when I got strong enough, I may have to go back and witness to them. But I know I ain't got there yet. It may not take the one drink or one smell of that marijuana. Y'all don't hear that. And I would have been on backslid, but I had to separate myself. There's a whole lot of you that say, but you don't want to separate yourself. Sometimes you got to let some of your homegirls go. You got to let your homeboys go. You still know them. You still love them. But it's your assignment to pray for them. Because they got a soul to say, you ain't better than they is. You just don't give it. You don't accept that God's plan of salvation. And you know you ain't strong enough. You know you ain't strong enough. But go back around her again. Shake like a Pentecostal body. You know you have probably that lust spirit on you anyhow. No, that's all right. That's all right. So sanctification is a separation of the believer from evil things and evil ways. Y'all know that. I knew that if I didn't get rid of my stuff in the closet, y'all know that. Let me go in my closet. In my, can, can I go in my closet for a minute? In, in my closet, I, I have my new porno videos. Uh, they were DVDs at the time, not DVDs. Uh, they were talking about them, them DCRs. Yeah. At the time, <laughs> in, in my closet, I had them on Naked Magazine. Uh, in, in my closet, I had a few pills, uppers and downs. Uh, y'all know him. There was somebody else that died pills. But we just howled, smashed it up, and snowed. Oh, y'all know him. In, in my 
I called it. I, I know I, I had that marijuana in there. Y'all go ahead. I, I looked over that, 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 that Jack Daniel that I sip on every now and then. And, and a little bit of tequila. A, a, a case of beer right there in, in my closet. That, that, that's my closet. You see, I'm not closet. I, I don't know what's in your closet. In my closet, I have my old list of some old girlfriends. Y'all know not hear me. I, I, I try to help her. She didn't have no cell phone back then, but I had my old list. That I, I couldn't keep it in no cell phone. Back in the old school days, you had that old, old phone like that, y'all. Uh, punk brother like that, y'all don't have. You had to hide your list. Uh, old girlfriend, y'all. That, that's my club. But I knew I had to separate myself from those things that was in my closet. I had to dispose of that. Come in one of those things. Thing that you used to do, you gotta shut the door 
pull the must out of the closet and destroy that must. Y'all, Father, we thank you. Every head by every eye closed. Father, we thank you. Thank you for being saved. I thank you for my salvation. That you chose me. And that you saved me. Thank you for your grace and mercy that brought me through. Hadn't always done what you told me to do. Don't even, you know all about it, but don't want to even give these people the impression that I'm perfect. I'm no wise perfect. Don't always dot every eye across all the teeth. Even my mind runs wild with me sometimes. And I have to bring it back in. Yes. Thank you for your grace. I want to be saved and I want to stay saved. I don't want to miss heaven and bust hell wide open. Father, I just thank you for your people. Thank you for the word that is going forth today. Help them to realize that all of us got to stand in front of their Holy Ghost mirror and take a look and examine our own selves and judge our own selves. And Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is truth. And you said in your word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If we want to be free, we thank you, Father. Now God seal the word. And we know it's sealed already. Even someone that may be listening may not be saved. I pray that God the Holy Ghost will convict them right now. And bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that their soul will be saved. Bring them to a place of sincere repentance. Of sincere godly sorrow. For their sins and their iniquities. And Father, we be careful to give you praise and give you glory. Even those two that got saved on yesterday. Father, I pray that God the Holy Spirit will lead them to a local church under a local pastor that will be able to nurture them and teach them how to work out their own soul salvation. And Father, we thank you for the woman of God. Continue to bless her. She went out on yesterday. You said in your word, he that went his soul is wise. And Father, we thank you for those that's coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Father, we thank you with great Help us to realize that this is a hospital, a place for the sick to come. Help us as doctors and nurses and midwives prepare our hearts and our minds for the people. Lord, help us, I pray, in the name of Jesus, and deliver us from ourselves. Help us, God, to make sure that we're saved today. Saved today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And Father, we praise you. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name. And every heart said amen and give God some praise all over the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.